Hey everyone, it's uh, Steve Wancho from Collider.com and Peter Serretta from SlashFilm.com. Uh, we are currently recording, a, obviously you're seeing it, we're doing a video blog about the Warner Brothers presentation while everyone downstairs is watching Paul Feig's Spy. Yeah, we're in Las Vegas at Caesars Palace where CinemaCon uh, is a convention for movie theater exhibitors where the studios show them all sorts of cool, awesome stuff from the next year of movies, trying to get them excited about the films. It is, it is Comic-Con for theater owners. Yes. Uh, so Although instead of like talking about the cool geeky shit, they're talking about this movie made five hundred billion dollars. <laughs> that's, that's true. Um, How can we get more people to pay more money? Uh, yeah, it's basically I don't want to use bad language, but it's kind of like a blowjob for the movie industry, yeah. where everyone's just touting how good everything went. Um, and uh, but they do show world premiere footage, for example, uh, what we're going to talk about with Warner Brothers. So we, we saw a ton of footage. And if we were going to go through all of it, this video blog would be 30 minutes long. And I think a lot of it you've already seen, like uh, Mad Max, San Andreas, uh, The Gallows. This this is stuff that's coming out, like, relatively soon. We're we're basically going to focus on August Beyond, uh, because from the August, there's stuff that we're going to talk about that... Is it stuff that you haven't seen? Yeah, it was world. It's basically world premiere footage. So let's jump into it and just know. Well, before that, let's uh, just list what what it is. Okay. Even though it's in this post up here. So. Sure. Um, Vacation, the National Lampoon uh, reboot. Uh, Creed, which is the continuing story of Rocky, but it's a yeah. reimagination, if you will. Black Mass, the Whitey Bulger story. Uh, new footage from Man from Uncle. Point Break, the remake or reboot or whatever you want to call it. Right. Uh, there is. Uh, we saw it in the heart of the sea. Yeah, and that, that is it, okay? So we're going to go in that order. So if you want to skip around, uh, you know where to skip to. Right. We, we also, there might have been something else and we're just forgetting. It's been a, a, loopy, a, a loopy day. Yes. We'll say it like that. So let's jump into uh, Vacation. National Lampoon's Vacation is one of my favorite comedy series of all time. Uh, when they announced the reboot, I was actually scared. I, I, I did not want this to happen. Um, but after seeing this trailer, I'm actually very excited about this. I had heard uh, that one of the reasons the film got greenlit and the movie got made was that everyone was raving about the script, saying how funny the script was, and the script is what got everyone on board. And after seeing this Red Band trailer today, uh, yeah, I am i mean, I'm completely yeah. sold. And it is very funny. And that's the thing that is upfront about this is it is vulgar. There's a lot of swears. There's rim job jokes. There's like, Glory you know, this jokes. is not a uh, PG-13 movie. This is an R-rated comedy. It seems like. Oh, this is this is this is a real uh, R-rated comedy. And uh, um, I don't want to give away some of the the, the other jokes in the trailer because uh, this is like something you release online and it plays like gangbusters. But there's a joke in the trailer with, with Chris Hemsworth, who is Thor. That is, uh, I mean, the whole theater erupted. It was yeah. very, very funny. And, and you know what? I like that this isn't a complete remake. It's the son of the Griswolds wanting to bring his family and recreate that uh, famous vacation going to Wally World. So it has that connection, and we, we do have Chevy Chase you know, coming back. And we sure. do have um, some memorable moments, like you know, the, the girl in the red car driving along them that they are playing off of. Right. There's, there's, a, yeah. there's a lot of references to the original vacation without... Being without it feeling forced yeah. and without it feeling fake, and it's not a re- like the thing I like about it is not a remake. They're not remaking it. It's it's it, they're playing off. Of. Right, and what's funny there's a bit in the trailer that uh, Ed Helms is telling his sister, you know, I'm taking the family to Wally World, and she's like, Why would you do that? That was the worst trip ever, you know. And there's uh, uh, and then there's a reference of yeah. it's not our their vacation. It's our. I mean, it, there's a there's yeah. a riff on the word vacation. And yeah. listen, the trailer is very well cut. Very funny. There's no way anyone who's watching this after they see the trailer is going to yeah. be like, oh, that looks stupid. For sure. No way. Um, look, really was great. Uh, so Creed. Yeah, Creed. Uh, I know this is going to sound like the same <laughs> story. When they announced this, Steve, right. I was like, this is bullshit. I don't need Rocky Seven. Right. Sylvester Stallone comes on stage tonight. He's, he says, uh, this isn't Rocky Seven. This is a story, this is a new era. A reimagine, a reinterpretation, a yeah. re whatever. But it, it is, it's almost like vacation where it is a new generation. It is Apollo Creed's son. Um, and we're following his story played by Michael uh, B. Johnson. Michael B. Johnson? I'm like, what are you? What's his name? Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan. 
I don't know why I said jump. Sorry. Like, yeah. uh, long day, guys. <laughs> long day. Um, and it seems like the story is kind of like a spotlight on him. Like, it really seems like it is a character piece. And it's a... It, it, to be honest, I think the best way, not to interrupt you, but I think the best way to describe it is it looks more like the original Rocky than yeah. anything else. It looks like they've gone back to the gritty, real roots and no, you know, Hollywood flash. It's like about a guy who's coming to grips with having nothing and never have been has been given anything who wants to you know he wants to be a fighter like his dad and he looks to rocky to help him train but you know it looks really gritty and you know what it doesn't look like it's a rocky movie aside from it like has that like gritty feel but it uh and it seems like it has the possibility of being a great sports movie but on top of that it has these moments of you know rocky's obviously in it and there's like so there's this strong personal connection that everybody that's seen Rocky has to that character in Apollo Creed that I think is going to only help this story. Yeah, and, and this is going to sound like a broken record, but yeah. the trailer is very well cut. Uh, great performances uh, in the trailer. Uh, it, it seemed like more than a trailer. That was like a sizzle reel from the movie. Yeah, I mean that was way Pressure. more than they're going to release. Uh, and you know, Michael, it seems like Creed's trying to get Rocky to train him. Rocky doesn't want to train him, kind of thing. Yeah, but what, what I also liked about it is that it didn't have Rocky playing like this cartoonish version of Rocky. Like Stallone was playing like a more level Rocky, a more yeah. well, he's just like running his restaurant, and that's like what he's doing nowadays. Yeah, it it was very well cut, and like Peter, um, I was not on board this movie getting made. I had literally no interest in it, and yet. The trailer has converted me. So marketing does work. Okay, so now Black Mask, when that was announced, I thought it was going to be awesome. We saw the footage, it sucked. <laughs> yeah, no. okay, clearly. <laughs> no, 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 like, no, no. What? Okay, I, 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 I was just trying to go against the grain. No. Black Mask. Uh, Scott Cooper, who uh, uh, has made two films before this, um, uh, Out of the Furnace and uh, the one with Jeff Bridges where he plays a singer. The country singer, yeah. I I, oh my God. Of, uh, um, I can't remember the name right now, yeah. and I'm sorry, but like he uh, directed this, and it, uh, the the trailer or the the, the footage we saw, uh, Johnny Depp plays Whitey Bulger, uh, Boston gangster, and the film is going to take place over a few decades. But we saw a sequence with uh, Johnny at a dinner table, uh, talking to someone who's an undercover FBI agent, but at the beginning we don't know that. Uh, and he's ba it's basically a conversation, and it's more just one scene unfolding, and it felt real and gritty, yeah. and Johnny's wearing these contact it, lenses. It feels like that, that scene in Goodfellas, where, like, um, the Joe Pesci, you know, you, you think I'm funny, yeah, funny, hot, like, it's that, but it's the drama, dramatic tension of it is kind of a little bit higher than that, I feel well, like. The, I gotta be honest, Goodfellas is one of my all-time favorite films, if yeah. not my favorite film. Yeah. So, I know what Peter's saying, but we're also jumping into the sequence without having, like, there's more to it than yeah, this. Yeah. So, it might be building up to it, but it's a, you're, yeah. it's a very good analogy. It does feel like the Joe Pesci sequence from Goodfellas, except it's more intimate, because the Goodfellas sequence is a, a, a large group of gangsters sitting around and scared of Joe Pesci. Yeah. This scene is like three people, and Johnny is playing it dead serious. And Johnny asks him what his family recipe, he's eating this thing that's his family recipe, and the guy gives up his family recipe, and he's like, so you, you're willing to give up your family secret, how do I know that you're not going to be willing to give up me? And yep. it, 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 It's the dramatic tension of that. Um, but the thing that you're going to take away from this, if you see this footage or you see the trailer, is Johnny Depp's transformation. And it's unlike Jack Sparrow or like his, you know, yep. over-the-top stuff. This is, you know... Very dramatic. Well, it's it's to be honest here. Johnny Depp is a really talented yeah. actor, but he's been doing yeah. these role. Come on now. Yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, uh, but he's been doing these roles that are not that are just cartoons. Yeah, you know, and that's fine. Like the Pirates of the Caribbean has made him enough money to like buy an island. Like he's made bon like bonkers money, and and like we all understand why he's doing these movies. But we all miss the Johnny Depp, yeah. the actor. You know, the guy who can the deliver. Lloyd, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or like uh, Carl, you know, the, he's been in a bunch of movies that, uh, yeah. real movies. Yeah, we and this the is, people watching this now. Th not only is Johnny in this, though, it's important to point out, you have Benedict Cumberbatch, you have this huge A-list group yeah. of actors. It's a massive cast. But it's also, we should mention, I mean, we're both from Boston. It's true. And the story of Whitey Bulger, I don't think has been told on a grand scale on film, at least that I know of. 
Um, and it's an interesting story, and I, I think that you know this film has a lot of potential. Oh, the story of Whitey Bulger is crazy, and um, with this cast and Scott Cooper directing, uh, there's no doubt that based on the footage we saw, there's like a gritty realism, and this is not being played for fun. This is a hardcore gangster movie, yeah. and I honestly can't wait. I love gangster movies, obviously with Goodfellas. Um, what's interesting is that uh, the movie comes out in September, and I would imagine this trailer will be online or some footage will be online within the next two weeks. September is definitely award season, yep. beginning of that. Um, we should move on, though, to yeah. The Man from Uncle. Sure. Uh, what, do, what do we want to say about The Man from Uncle? I mean, it, it seems like what the footage we saw to me was, you know, Guy Ritchie, stylist, action, what you expect from him, but like a period kind of interesting take. Sure. I, I interviewed uh, Henry Cavill and Army Hammer on the red carpet, and I asked them to talk about the film, and Army said, did you see the first trailer for Man From U.N.C.L.E.? I said, yes. He goes, what'd you think? I said, it reminded me of, it looked like a Guy Ritchie movie. And he's like, if you like the first trailer, he's like, that's the movie we made. We're not mis-selling it. We're not, you know, uh, trying to do a bait and switch with the audience. He's like, if you like the trailer, you're going to like this movie. I'm a huge fan of spy pictures, and I yeah. like Guy Ritchie movies. They're yeah. fun. Uh, and the new footage... Well, the thing is, even when I don't like a Guy Ritchie movie, I can watch it, and I like the cinematography. There's things to like about it. So I think, you know, while I'm, the story here isn't, like, 100% grabbing me, uh, but I'm I want to see it for the style. Right. I'm, I'm looking forward to it being a, a yeah. period picture. And something else that's interesting, a lot of movie stars and a lot of, like, actors are overexposed. What's fascinating about Henry Cavill is he is not overexposed. He did Man of Steel and has done nothing since. There's no big picture that he's done because... Uh, Man from Uncle was supposed to come out in December. Wasn't well, that kind of like the Superman curse, though? I mean, you feel like you do Superman and then, like. Sure, I mean, I. I mean, there's some great actors that have done. Listen, I think yeah. Henry. I love Man of Steel. Yeah. I thought he was fantastic in it. And um, I'm genuinely looking forward to Man from Uncle. I really hope it comes together. The footage I saw looked like a fun movie, a fun 60s caper spy film. And it, you know, it looked like Sherlock Holmes, but, you know, in the 60s with spies. Does that make any, you know, yeah, like... I agree. Uh, Let's move on to something that we call Point Break. <laughs> um, the original film was directed uh, by now Academy Award winning... Um, uh, Catherine Bigelow. Uh, Catherine Bigelow, who used to be married to James Cameron. Um, and it was a fun, campy, you know, with, uh, with um, uh, Patrick Swayze and uh, Keanu Reeves. Uh, this film, you know, and I was kind of interested in a remake. Like, it seemed like, it, like there's... Like See, that's something interesting. That. Most people are not interested in this film. Uh, well, you know what? I like the Fast and the Furious movies, and that seemed kind of like a ripoff of uh, Point Break, at least the original Fast and Furious, uh, but with cars. And I really don't care about cars, so I thought, like, you know, Point, a Point Break remake could be kind of cool. No. Well, that's interesting. You see, I saw the footage inside the room, and the mistake was they showed this sequence. There was a. The, okay, let's go backwards. About this point break, the most important thing to know is that they've assembled the world's leading extreme athletes yeah. to film sequences that are batshit crazy. Do you remember Transformers 3 when they had those sky jumpers jumping out of the, uh, the thing in Chicago? It's one of my favorite moments of that. Okay, movie. so that was a crazy sequence. Point break is that but the whole movie. So it's like surfers doing these crazy surf sequences. It's these flyers going through this mountain pass. It's all, they assembled, again, yeah. the world leaders in extreme sports to film and stuff. And the footage we saw in 3D looked almost like a documentary at times. Well, that was my yeah. problem actually with the footage is that they showed the entire sequence and the problem with it was, it was like this four minute sequence in the mountains flying, but because we don't really know these characters yet and because it's not there's no stakes. You're basically watching a documentary yeah. of these people. But, but my problem is, it's not that we don't know the characters and we don't know the stakes. And I, I, I mean, that is a problem. But watching them, these guys fly, they weren't doing anything. Michael Bay shooting these guys flying in between the buildings of Chicago and stuff. There was some exciting moment, and you have Transformers and whatever. Like this, they weren't getting close to anything. I mean, it's right, kind of cool that they're like wingsuit guys. I, I, like, have, I have to pause you yeah. there. I did the Point Break press conference where they showed extra footage, uh, and they were showing us like how they did these sequences. And when you see where they were and you hear the athletes talking about what they were doing... Yeah, but you're not going to care about that when you're watching the movie. Sure. What I'm saying is the sequence they showed us inside the panel was 
it was too long without enough stakes on the characters. I think that once the movie comes out and there's these crazy set pieces featuring, you know, stunts that are insane, yeah. I think that's going to be a driver into the movie. The question is, does it retain the fun Yeah. Characters? Well, that was my problem also. They had clips from the storyline with the actors, and it seemed to lack the fun and campiness of... Yeah, well, we're going to... I mean, look, they're playing... Yeah, it's, th this is the one I'm going to be critical on. Oh, listen... Uh, out of these... Six movies, this is the one, so... Yeah, I mean, th this, listen, I'm not against the movie. I yeah, think the footage yeah. looked interesting, yeah. but it's definitely one I need to see the finished film uh, before I make any sort of judgment. But the, if you are into extreme athletes and crazy footage and real stunts being done for a movie, this is going to be something you've never seen before. And our final film... Is In the Heart of the Sea by Ron Howard, which is... Um, Based on the true story that inspired Moby Dick. Yes. Right? Um, the, I mean, you've seen trailers for it because it's been delayed and pushed back. Well, let's not, let's not use the word delayed because it's been done. They elected been, to push it back to the fall release because they feel they have a, an awards kind of movie. And they didn't want to release it at the beginning. And after the footage today, yeah. I would agree with them. Yeah. The movie looks beautiful. It looks like a film and a story from a different time, but with the enhancement of some of the best visual effects at sea visual effects I've seen ever, like seeing this, you sure. know, it, 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 just some thrilling sequences. Uh, it seems like it's going to be dramatic and also have like some real action with a sense of, you know, something you, you haven't seen before. Yeah, and, um, and Chris Hemsworth uh, filmed that a while ago and he's like super thin and not the Thor that you know, um, looks radically different. And uh, I like Ron Howard movies. I think Rush is really underrated. I think it's a really good film. And All of Ron Howard's movies are amazing. You, every movie? Name Oh, Apollo 13. Oh, I, I wait, love wait, wait, wait. Ransom. I love, you know, uh, Cinderella Man. I love... Hold on. I actually like that. Um, I liked... I did Backdraft. I liked Backdraft. Backdraft's but I didn't, good. I didn't, but I didn't love it. I liked it. Yeah. Um, no, Apollo 13's fantastic. That's um, one of my favorites, Apollo, Apollo 13. A anyways. Yeah, we're off on a Anything Ron Howard does, I'm in. I'm going to be in the, in the theater to see it. And, um, well, here's the thing. The extended trailer they showed today, I agree with you. Uh, footage looked fantastic. The movie got pushed to the fall season for awards, and it absolutely looks like it could be an awards movie. Um, I, again, and the visual effects, as you said, were you know crazy. Um, and maybe that's why they also pushed it back, because the, maybe the VFX weren't perfect, because the whale stuff we saw today was like... Very, very, very good effects. Amazing. Like, really jaw-dropping good. Yeah, it, it was uh, like, it was impressive. You know, you saw Life of Pi. It looks like... You know, yeah, no, that's yeah, true. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, So basically, Warner Brothers uh, did very well today, I would, I would say. Do you agree? Yeah. I mean, Paramount came here, and they came here with some stuff that's coming out more... Uh, uh, not as far in the future, and they showed some big clips... Uh, Warner Brothers came here with a lot of clips and showing far out releases and to me and you I feel like that impresses us more than seeing 20 minutes of, or like 15 minutes of you know a film coming out in two months. Sure I think that the yeah. difference between the, the Paramount and Warner Brothers if we if we dissect it a little bit Paramount has two huge films yeah, yeah. that can easily both make a billion dollars and when we look at the Warner Brothers lineup you know I don't necessarily see I don't know if any of these can make a billion dollars. In fact, I, I'm going to say that they won't. Uh, yeah. um, but they have Batman, Superman, and yeah. uh, we should mention that Warner Brothers' Kevin Tushahara, the CEO, yeah. uh, mentioned that the three big focuses in their future is uh, DC movies, Lego movies, and Harry Potter. Here, yeah, the uh, Fantastic Beasts. Anyways, we are running long. Yeah, this has true. been twice as long as uh, the Paramount video, yeah. but it's good because this has been uh, four, uh, three times as many movies. Right. So uh, you can find more of my work at SlashFilm.com and Twitter.com slash SlashFilm. You can find me on Collider and on Twitter and Instagram and everything is Collider Frosty. And we'll be here for the rest of the week, CinemaCon, uh, covering all the movie presentations, so check back. And I was going to say tomorrow is Sony and Inside Out. Thanks for watching.